Today, let's talk about Newcastle. Since Eddie Howe's appointment in November of last year, he has revolutionised the way they play and he's managed to get them results on the pitch. A big part of this was the January business they did, bringing in some smart signings, of course, backed by their free spending Saudi owners. Now, they go into this summer transfer window with a real project to build on. They have got a long-term future, which is going to be Quite exciting if you're a Newcastle fan. It starts with this summer window. And today, in today's video, we're going to go through what I think they might do in the market. Let's get into it. And welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another realistic rebuild on the channel. Today, we're going to do Newcastle. I was thinking about which club do we do next? A few people have requested it, but also they've got all this money to go and spend. It's a really exciting project if you're a Newcastle fan. There's a lot to be done in this window as well, as I think their ambitions are going to be quite high. Maybe a European place, maybe just trying to push up towards the top of that table as far as they can manage. Newcastle fans, let me know what your aims would be for the season. I am interested to know that. We're going to get into the transfers that I think they might bring in. And we're also going to have a look at the type of approach, the type of tactics that they're going to use into next season. And then, of course, because you seem to like this, we'll do a little simulation as well to see how they end up doing after we've done our business. Let's uh, let's get into our video, shall we? Before we do get into the video, I have to just say thank you so, so much for 20,000 subscribers. Hooray! It is massively, massively appreciated. Thank you so, so much to everybody who has subscribed lately. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe now and maybe we'll aim for the next target, which is a million. That is getting carried away. 25k, 25k. Let's aim for 25k. Also, I don't usually do this. Should we do a like target for today's video? Maybe you can let me know what we should do if we hit the like target of 1,000 likes. That's the target. That's ambitious. Go for it. Okay, to start our rebuild then, I think what we need to do first of all is assess what is the current Newcastle squad. And what I've done is I've set up here in what I think is akin to Howe's 4-3-3, which is how he finished the season with Newcastle last season when they were doing so, so well. They've moved away from the five at the back system that Steve Bruce seemed to adopt where he was basically everybody back, give the ball to Alan St. Maximan and hope that he can do something. That didn't go particularly well. I think it was 19th when Eddie Howe took over as manager, he went to a bit of a 4-4-2 to start with, with Wilson up front, with St. Maximin around him, trying to get those players on the ball and trying to change things slightly. Towards the end of the season, we saw more of this 4-3-3, sometimes more like a 4-1-4-1, but I think we'll see a lot more of this 4-3-3 for next season. Something that looks a little bit like this. And what I've done is, I've gone and put the players in that ended last season. So the goalkeeper, Dubravka, we had Kieran Trippier put in here. Of course, he did get his injury and miss a lot of games. He was sensational when he first started off his Newcastle career, wasn't he? We'll be hoping to see a bit more of him next season, for sure, from this right-hand side. I've got Fabian Scher alongside Dan Byrne. I know a centre-back is going to be a position they're going to look to bring somebody in. In fact, they've already brought somebody in here. Sven Botman has joined the club. We'll see him join as well. I'm going to go and try and make sure I get him in in this realistic rebuild as well. And then Matty Target, of course, has joined on a permanent deal from Villa as well, hasn't he? Spent the second half of the season on loan here. This midfield then, which includes Bruno Bruno Guimaraes at the base of it. And then I think brilliantly, it was a masterstroke, wasn't it? Joel Linton just ahead of him as this box-to-box -box midfielder. I think out of everything that Eddie Howe has done at Newcastle, the decision to bring Joel Linton back into the midfield and turn him into a really, really good midfielder has been, it's been a masterstroke. I loved watching him play. I loved the uh, the redemption arc for Joel Linton there. And we're going to see that a lot more next season. I think he was their player of the season in the end, wasn't he, Joel Linton? And then this other midfield spot here with John Joe Shelby. I've put Shelby in. We could also see sometimes Joe Willock play in there. You could also see Sean Longstaff in there. That's maybe a role that they might look Look to bring somebody new in. I wonder. They might prioritise other areas, but for sure this area here, I might just remove the player now. I think we might be looking for somebody new there. Let's go ahead and actually do that for Dan Byrne at left centre-back too, because we know that they brought Sven Botman in here. And of course, there is one more bit of business that they've already done, which is Nick Pope as the new goalkeeper too. So let's leave these guys blank and let's move forward into the front three, which at the moment is Alan St. Maximin from the left-hand side. He's a bit of an enigma, isn't he? When he gets it right, he is sensational, but when he gets it wrong he is endlessly 
frustrating. Having a manager like Howell, though, I'm hoping is going to get the best out of Alan St. Maximan this season. Maybe taking a little bit of the weight off him in terms of expectations. Maybe then having some better players around him will see the best of Alan St. Maximan. He will probably be starting from this left-hand side, won't he? Right wing is going to be an area where they're going to want to strengthen this summer. I'm going to look at the players that I think they might want to bring in. I'm going to look for players that I think are realistic for Newcastle to bring in and make that one of my priorities for the transfer window. And then up front, we've got Callum Wilson here, but we know that they brought Chris Wood in in the January window. He was effective if he didn't score many goals. I just wonder though, Callum Wilson as the first choice striker in this system, can they rely on him with his injury record? Do they need to go and strengthen there? I think they probably do. So from this assessment, I think the areas that I'm going to look to strengthen are, I'm going to go and try and get Nick Pope in and Sven Botman. I'm going to go and look for a new winger on this right-hand side. And I'm going to maybe go and have a look for this central midfielder too. I will also be exploring the possibility of bringing in another striker to contend with Callum Wilson and Chris Wood up front as well. In terms of outgoings to finance some of these deals as well, basically any of these players that are listed down here, I will maybe be looking to see if they could be moved on. Players especially like Jamal LaSalle's, who I expect to go and join Forrest, his old team. Isaac Hayden has already moved on, hasn't he? Freddie Woodman, maybe alone, maybe go permanently this summer. Jamal Lewis, I think he'll probably move on. Jacob Murphy, Dwight Gale, will he go on another loan? I think Ryan Fraser will probably be okay. And Dubravka will probably be okay as well. But most of these guys are look to move on. I say to try and finance the deals. It's not like money is really a problem for Newcastle. But just in terms of maybe FFP, I'd maybe expect them to spend about 100 million in the summer transfer window. They spent 90 million in January, about 100 million this summer. That seems to be about the sweet spot for me. That's what I'm going to be aiming to do as I go now and start to do some business in the transfer window. I will see you when I've made some signings. Okay, the transfer business has been concluded. And instead of showing you the transfer screen to start with, we're going to start on the squad screen here. And with those gaps that I left in the starting lineup to show you who I've brought in in each of those positions. Some of them won't be a surprise. For example, Nick Pope in goal because he has, of course, signed in real life. And I've brought him in on FM as well. He's cost me on FM about £7.5 million with a few future clauses. It was, I think, about £10 million in real life. So not too unrealistic in terms of the fee either. And then the next one is, of course, Sven Bot to come in in this defense as well i think he's a big signing for them you know on this left hand side of defense it does mean that dan burn is maybe not going to get as much game time and he's been brilliant for them i suppose also if they do go back to a back three at any point you've got dan burn in there as well but i think botman is a bit of a statement of intent somebody they've tracked for a long time some big teams in for sven botman as well he's cost me 29 million pounds on fm he comes in to this defense as well alongside a permanent signing of matty target 15 million pounds spent on matty target he will now be a Newcastle player as he is in real life permanently into the midfield. Now I'm going to leave this one till last and I'll explain why that is the case in a second. I think before that, we're going to jump forward to this right hand side. And as you can see, or maybe if you're eagle eyed, you'll notice it's an inside or inverted winger now rather than a winger, which it was before with Ryan Fraser. That's because I've signed a left footer to go and play on this right hand side. And it is Musa Diaby, a player they've been linked with in real life. And I think a player that could be a really smart bit of business for Newcastle. I have spent how much money on him? 40 million pounds, a little bit of a marquee signing. I think Newcastle fans will want a marquee signing this summer. Whether it will be the winger in Diaby, maybe it will be that centre midfielder. I think Musa Diaby ticks a lot of boxes. He's young. He's going to develop with this Newcastle team, which is going to be built for the long term from now with Eddie Howe at the helm. This one just makes a bit of sense to me. Musa Diaby coming in from Bayer Leverkusen, where he's been there now for, I think, two seasons. Look, and he's done all right there. Caught the eye of quite a few teams across Europe. If Newcastle can go and get him, it would be a really smart signing. He will be on this right-hand side with St. Maximin cutting in from the left-hand side with a striker in front of them that can maybe facilitate some goals being scored. I think that could be deadly up front for Newcastle. And that new signing up front is... It's not Callum Wilson, who is still going to play a lot of games for Newcastle. Make no mistake about that. It's actually... Armando Broja. I've brought him in. I've brought him in initially on loan from Chelsea. Although I do wonder if they go and get him permanently this summer. It kind of depends what Chelsea want to do with their young striker who was brilliant for Southampton last season. A fantastic start to the season for Southampton. You can't see his stats there. But actually maybe did kind of tail off a little bit towards the end of last season. Still a lot of potential on this guy though. And I can see him being a success if Eddie Howe wants to bring him in. Him, you know, dropping a little bit deeper. He's big. He's tall. He's strong. 
strong, can bring in players like DRB, can bring in players like St. Maximan. This could be a really fun Newcastle team, but could it get even more fun? I think it could. If they really want to go out there and make a big, big marquee signing to add a bit of spice to this team, I just wonder if they could go and get Lucas Paqueta from AC Milan. If he could come into this midfield, I mean, look how good he is in FM. If they can go and spend, what, £35 million on him, as I have done in FM here, this Brazilian midfield three would be so exciting. It's a midfield that other fans in the league would be jealous of. I'm sure of it. Bruno, Joel Linton, and then Paqueta just in front of them on this left-hand side. He's left-footed, of course. He's dynamic. He's He's a bit of a flare player. He's very Bruno, isn't he? The two of them together are just... It would be really spicy, wouldn't it, in there? I just wonder. That's probably the least realistic of my new signings that I've brought in. But I just... I just love it to happen, to be honest. That then is the business that I've done in this realistic rebuild. Let's go through them. Target Pope, Diaby Botman, Paqueta and Broha. This squad, this team should be aiming for 6th, 7th. Maybe fifth. Maybe that will be a little bit of a stretch too far. But certainly towards the top of this Premier League, cementing themselves in maybe those European places, definitely in that top half. I did do some transfers out as well. If we go through them here, I did sell on or loan out Elliot Anderson. I loaned out Dwight Gale. I'd have liked to have moved him on permanently, but he's gone to Swansea. Woodman on loan. Isaac Hayden did leave on a free, didn't he, to Norwich. But I could only loan him out here. Emil Kraft got an offer from Brighton. I thought it's fine to let him go. And then a couple more as we go through through. LaSalle's went to Espanyol rather than where I think he will actually end up, which is Forrest. Jamal Lewis has moved on. He went to Wren in FM. Jeff Hendrick and Kieran Clark also moved on from the club. Hendrick on a free, Kieran Clark for 500k. Not much money in terms of incomings, but they've got money to burn. They've got money to go and spend. The wages saved will help them to bring those players in. And FFP, I think the £129 million here is probably just about doable. Maybe if they can, you know, structure that over a few years or do a little bit of business around that, maybe they'll get away with this, I think. That's also, I think, why perhaps the Pecator deal is a little bit on the unrealistic side rather than realistic, but... As I mentioned before, I just really want them to go and do it for that Brazilian midfield. This then will be the side as we go and simulate a season with Newcastle. And as I mentioned before, I think the aim is going to be European places, maybe towards the top half, definitely in that top half, maybe towards 6th, 7th, maybe 5th, depending on how well this system does. The 4-3-3, we've also got the 4-1-4-1 as a bit of a backup. Let's go and simulate the season and see how they get on. I'll be back in May. Oh, by the way, if you do want to go and play with this Newcastle team after I've done the realistic rebuild, the save file is going to be uploaded to my Patreon, the Claytreon. If you are interested in that at all, I do upload as many of the save files as I do in all of these different videos to the Patreon for those people who support me over there. Thank you so much for the current Patreon members, by the way. So if you do want to go and play with Newcastle after I've done my rebuild, then you can go and find that save file over on there. Let's go through to May. Okay, we are back in May and we're finished seventh so do you know what i kind of said this didn't I? I kind of mentioned that these european spots will be where we're aiming to finish and we finished in seventh actually leads have finished six here which is quite an interesting one 57 points in seventh i think newcastle fans you'd maybe be happy with this one you'll have to let me know in those comments down below what would you expect your team to do in this upcoming season would you be happy with a seventh place finish above chelsea i feel like that maybe is something you would be happy with let's also then have a look at how some of the players did and how we did in the cup competitions as well. Okay, so I'm having a look at this squad here and there are one or two interesting little quirks with what the AI has decided to do with them whilst we were on holiday. I'm looking straight away. Nick Pope has only played one game in goal. Now, I don't expect that one to happen in real life. He, the AI has obviously preferred Martin Dubravka as the goalkeeper here, but I'd expect Nick Pope to be the number one after signing. Also going through only five games for Moussa Diaby on this right hand side. I'd expect him, if they were to bring him in, to play a lot more games than that. Callum Wilson, also the first choice striker, ahead of Armando Broja. Look, who only played 20 games. I wonder who did actually play on this right-hand side instead of Diaby. Maybe it was Broja from the wing, which, of course, he can sort of do, can't he? 16 goals from Callum Wilson, though. Seven goals from Joel Linton in the midfield, too. We haven't got the assists on here. We do have the average ratings, though, at the end here. The best performers in the squad, Kieran Trippier with a 7.24. Botman was good. Also, St. Maximum was good. He got six goals himself. I'll just show you the stats there for some of the players, just so you can pick up on them. Dan Byrne played... 
four matches only. Almiron played 10. 23 from Federico Fernandez. 20 from Broha. Oh, yeah, look. 42. Oh, yeah, we mentioned that. 42 for Dubravka. I will show you some of the results as well if we go through some, some wins, some losses, as you'd expect. They beat Man City 2-0 there, look. They lost to Chelsea 3-0. They lost to Liverpool. They lost to Manchester United. In the Cups, I'm looking. How did they do in the Carabao Cup? They lost to Leeds, who did finish fifth in the league, didn't they? Or six, was it? They lost 3-0 to them at home, which isn't particularly good. How do they do in the FA Cup? If I scroll down, they lost to Liverpool in the fifth round, which losing to Liverpool isn't terrible, is it? But losing 5-2 is maybe a little bit embarrassing. And if I just... They beat City again. They beat City home and away. I mean, Newcastle fans, you'd be happy with that one, wouldn't you? That's an... It's an interesting season overall, I think. 16-1, 9 draws, 13 lost. But finishing 7th and qualifying for the Conference League... It's a start. It's a start on this building blocks of this long-term project of the club. I wonder if Newcastle fans, you would be happy with that. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, other fans, let me know who you want to see me go and do a realistic rebuild of next. I'm kind of wondering, do we do the whole Premier League? Let me know. Also, there is that like target of 1,000 likes on this video. You have to let me know what you think I should go and do if we hit that like target. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for 20k. Let's move on to 25k next. Thank you for all of your support. Most importantly, though, have a lovely rest of your day. I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.